Hello, friends, and welcome back to another episode of Joy of Exile, where I share with you what I like to do in the game, the way that I think about it, and how I have fun and sustain this game in a happy and healthy way. So today, the topic will be mapping efficiently and healthily. So I think that this is a topic that people talk about a lot. We do have the concept of hideout is lava, make sure that you're always mapping, what are you doing super, super efficiently. But I think, especially by using the word efficient, it might be a little bit of a turnoff for the casual player. And I don't think it absolutely has to mean, all right, I am 100% doing everything perfectly. It doesn't mean, hey, you can't watch YouTube or Netflix on the other screen. Doesn't mean anything like that. To me, what efficient means is just that while I'm in the game, I'm just going through the map. And my default behavior as I'm playing is just going into a map being able to open them up, kill the monsters, and get out there very, very quickly, and not absolutely stressing out about all of that. So I really wanna focus on two things today, making mapping your default behavior and reducing all of the barriers and friction to you know make sure that you're doing it in a decently efficient way, but low stress and you feel very comfortable and you have the habit of booting up the game and ready to go into those maps. And second of all, being able to do that for longer sessions or for whatever the time that you have allotted in a healthy way and so you don't have to worry about wrist pain, you're getting enough water and all that type of stuff. Some of these techniques might sound a little silly, but I do strongly recommend trying them out because the most important thing is your own health and making sure that whatever game that you're playing, especially if you're playing a lot of hours, is something that you're not regretting and is a positive impact on your life and is just making you happy and you're not regretting that. So let's open up with a map and just showing a little bit of what I like to do here. Although first off, most important thing is give your cat a little kiss and then let him outside because I think he has to go to the bathroom. You know, I've been playing games for decades at this point, especially games that are kind of this persistent online service. I know that you're gonna have that habit of like, I wake up in the morning, I make my coffee, and I just boot up the game and I start sitting here. And if, especially if I don't have a plan, maybe I'll just take a random map, you know, kind of just grab this, uh, I don't know, courtyard, all right, open up the map, yada yada. And like, yeah, you can do that. Maybe if you just want to get warmed up, you start doing that. But the most important thing to me is I like to just spend, hey, why not just spend five minutes or so reflecting on what we did yesterday, thinking about what we want to do today and kind of setting some goals for whatever our play session might be. Just by doing a little bit of that preparation and thought, I think goes a very, very long way to ensuring that the time that you spend playing is not only more efficient, more profitable, but also just more fun. You know, after a long play session, like if you're sitting there for six hours, you, you wake up, you know, you have your, your tendies or <laughs> whatever you have for breakfast, and you just kind of sit in this game and you, you sit around, you run like a couple low tier maps, and then you're like, oh, maybe I want to spawn the boss. And then you just kind of go in there and then after you do that, you got like bad drops and it took you an hour. Then you go and you make some more tendies and you pour some Mountain Dew and you just think back on like, oh man, I just didn't do anything in the game. Felt like a waste of time. Think that just spending five minutes at the beginning of that play session and setting those goals and thinking about what you're gonna do can just go a very long way to setting the expectations. And then at the end of it, I do recommend reflecting on what you did and kind of analyze and internalize what happened there. And then you can work on that process in the future and make it even better. So if I just take a couple seconds right now and think about what I wanna do, I wanna show you guys setting up a couple maps, my strategy, how I'm putting things together, and then just run a map and we're gonna talk through it really, really quickly. So how am I gonna do that? So first off, what I like to do is just grab a set of four maps at a time. Why do I grab four maps? That's because I have enduring influence here and sextant modifiers will last for four maps. What I like to do is run in sets of four maps at a time. That will give me a nice cadence for the number of sextant uses that I have. It's also a nice breaking point. In the past, I used to run maybe eight or even 12 maps at a time, but because these maps are so juicy, there's so much content in the maps these days between essences, strong boxes, harbingers, blight, et cetera, et cetera. Even for a very quick character, maps can easily take five to 10 minutes each. And and that means running four maps now can take up to half an hour pretty easily, even for a fast character. And I think that that is a good breaking point to focus on the healthy aspect of things that we're gonna get into a little bit later. So what I did is gather the materials that I would be using. So normally I would get a full stack of the scarabs that I'm looking for. I would just spend those extra five to 10 minutes purchasing the scarabs if I need them before I do a session. Then I chisel up all of my maps and I go down the line and they elk them. What I like to do is if you use Awaken PoE Trade, you know, the tool that we have right here for price checking things, you can also do something which is check a map. I believe that the default key is control M. And if you go to the options, you can configure the modifiers that it'll warn you about. So what I do is I go down the line and I press control M 
on each one of the maps and I can see if it has a scary modifier or not. As you can see, cannot leech here. This is an absolute no-go for me. And the minus nine max res with the extra fizz as lightning and cold, I think that that's a little too scary as well. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna chaos spam these until we don't see anything scary. All right, that looks decent there. And that looks decent there. All right, pretty good. These are maps that we can now run. Once I have my set of maps ready to go, then we go down to the void stones and we use our sextons. So just have certain sextons that you might be looking out for that might be a little scary. One last step before we get into the maps themselves is I like to just take my scarabs. Usually you would just put a full stack of scarabs in there so you don't have to worry about it. Then I put my map in the middle and then I decide what I wanna do here. Because I'm using Shaping the Valley where I get 10% quant rarity and pack size from Fortune Favors of Brave. I'm just gonna do that. There's a lot of really good stuff on the map device this league beyond Harbinger, Ambush, Domination even with all the Shrine nodes. Really, really, really good stuff. So I am happy just spending three Chaos with Fortune Favors of Brave. We get that 10% Quant pack size and rarity. So that's what I like to do. If you wanna force a specific strategy, you might just wanna pick the thing that you're always looking for. I highly recommend if you're doing a mapping strategy, always, always, always use those map device modifiers. It's almost impossible for you to not get your currency back and juice your map more and just be extra profitable. If you're not using those things yet, I strongly recommend getting into being used to doing that. In addition to that, have a strategy for which boss that you're gonna go for, if you're gonna try to spawn Maven and go for that, or if you're going for one of the Eldritch bosses. I don't really ever recommend running without any of these turned on. I would look into what might be more profitable, which mobs are less scary for you and all of that, make sure that it feels good for you. But just the amount of pack size that you get from these modifiers is so much that it's just free quant. There's the master missions. I, I feel weird about master missions right now. I, I'm kind of just letting them accumulate and wait for the profitability of these things to go up. The main ones that I usually do are Betrayal and Elva for selling double corrupt chambers. And right now, people aren't really utilizing them. These are ones that the price will go way, way up about a month into League, once people have more currency and they're going for Veiled modifiers or double corrupting their big items. So I just kind of wait for those master missions to pile up. Once I have like 100 of them a month into the League, well, then we start using those and making lots of currency. And then getting into the healthy aspect of this video, a funny thing that I like to do that you may not have tried yet is setting a timer. You can just open up a browser, search for Google Timer, and you get one right here. What I'll do is I'll set this to usually about an increment of 30 minutes at a time. If you listen to it, you get up, get a nice glass of water, go to the bathroom. Really, really important is stretch those wrists, walk around, do a little, you know, try to touch your toes, really stretch and, and move around a little bit makes a very, very big difference for just like, you know, you get a little bit older as a gamer here, making sure that your back doesn't hurt, make sure that your wrists don't feel too bad, you can sustain them going into the future. I was a semi-professional Warcraft 3 player, actually. I don't think I've said that on the YouTube channel yet. And going from Warcraft 3 and then playing Starcraft 2 and becoming a GM in that game and the amount of hours and all that that I played, I actually did have some pretty severe wrist issues for a while. And I've spent a lot of time thinking about ergonomics and how I play the game and all that. And there will be videos on the future. This, that's actually something that I'm very passionate about is making sure that we can play these games into the future. And, and uh, you know, I don't want everyone to have their just hands falling off when they're 35 years old and you can't play games anymore. So let me know in the comments below if you're interested in just like ergonomics and, and like holistic thinking about how you play games, something that I really care about. So I'm excited to, to share that stuff with you guys. And then we're gonna go into this one map that we have rolled up and just show how I like to play these maps. The second most important thing is make sure you have a build that you really love is really fun and you enjoy that process of actually playing the game. I know that there's a lot of focus in the game on playing super, super efficiently, playing like the top tier best meta build in the game. And it doesn't have to be that. There are so many other builds in the game that are so fun to play that can fit you and your playstyle. I strongly recommend the most important thing is just go out there and always seek that try to customize whatever build you're looking at and find something that really, really clicks with you. If you saw my last video in this series, you saw that I am currently playing a Hollow Palm Raider and I'm having an absolute blast. This is my first time going really, really hard on Infernal Blow and when everything clicks, it is just as satisfying as any other skill I've played for blowing up the entire screen and just running around at warp speed. Now, when it comes to running the maps, I like to just have a plan as well for the different content that, I, that I'm going in don't feel the need to do all the content in the map. It's, uh, you know, sometimes master missions and all that will pop up and you might feel pressured for, for doing them. And, uh, you know, it's not necessarily important to always do everything. Now, like with Harvest, this is actually a perfect example. <laughs> with Harvest here, I'm gonna go in and just see if there's any 
of these harvests here that really, really click for what I'm going for right now. Which, yeah, we have one right here. I want attack. I'm going to take off my sword here really quick. Because when the Dancing Dervish is in my hand, until it's activated, I do no damage. Then I'm just going to do this. I have a plan for when I go into harvest as well. This kind of also feeds into the entire plan and strategy that we're talking about. Is I want to know when I trigger something in harvest or anything in blight, I know what I'm looking for and I can save as much time as possible. So what I'm trying to do here is just reforge attack and craft a cluster jewel. So I have this cluster jewel that's ready to go. I throw it into reforge attacks and I just click and go until I see three notables. And if I don't see it, we're good to go. We keep going and let's just get out. Don't feel forced, right, to, to do the content that you don't like. Maybe you're not in the mood for expedition. Maybe you're not in the mood for harvest. Just skip it. Just want to talk with you all. Blow up a lot of monsters. Having fun doing that. The essences are like the rippiest, scariest thing in my, for my character here. <laughs> These things are really scary. So I'm just going to take my time, punch them a little bit, get back, get my life up. There we go. Yeah, do you have a build that you're loving right now? Is there is there anything off meta that you're playing right now that you're really, really enjoying? You know, I've played Hollow Palm leveling it quite a few times in the past. And I always oh, felt cool. like, you know, I get to like level 70, 75. It says big DPS numbers. But I never put a lot of time like fully putting a build together that like thinks about defense a little bit and scales the offense more. And it is an absolute joy to just run through these maps quickly. And uh, I've only invested about two more exalts since the last video. So we're on about seven exalts investment. And uh, I can do tier 16 maps, as you can see, pretty cleanly. Yo, know, that's really the most important thing to me is having a, having a build that I love. Like, you know, at the end of the day, all we're doing is we're playing a build, right? You know, what you're doing in the map and the, and the content and the, the currency and the strategy and all that, that is part of what we're doing. But... You know, the real way that we're interacting with the game, that, that we're interfacing with all these mechanics, is through a build. And, I don't know, I'm maybe just because I'm a little bit of a build-centric person, I like the mechanics and all that. Just finding that build that clicks with me, that's, that's where, like, the real fun comes from. So for that expedition, for example, you know, another way that I make sure that I am making the most of my time and I'm not feeling stressed and I'm enjoying that, is I didn't spend the extra time really reading all of the remnants. I just kind of took a glance at them, saw if I saw like log books, you know, like the really important ones. And I didn't see anything that I really, really uh, wanted to, to focus on there. So I just went V, 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 V and kept on going. Sometimes those strong box monsters, they wander a little bit, and I never know if it's actually a double open or a uh, or just a wandering monster I have to go seek out and find. All right, so this looks like Zoff. Zoff is very low value, so it's great quant. It's just really nice for you know getting better drops, getting getting more chances for good drops. But I don't also super stress trying to fully clear the uh, the breach, especially if it's like a low value breach. Just keep on going forward, killing those monsters. I could have Netflix up right now. Now, Breach Splinters are not worth very much. I am just throwing in Breach Scares because that's what I have. Keeping it kind of low investment, low stress. Harbingers, I'm actually a really big fan. I've gotten uh, quite a few Exalted charts from these guys. I think people I think people are sleeping on the Harbingers a little bit and not giving them, uh, giving them the respect that they deserve right now. All right, kill the boss here really quick. There we go. And I think we're about done. And then what I do is I have Tane right here, right next to my map device. I can control click him, sell the things that I need to sell. Basically six sockets are the only thing that I'm picking up that I'm selling right now. So it's just a quick little click, click, click. And then we have our dump tab. Now, generally I would recommend leaving your tab affinities on. Yesterday we did this on stream and I turned off my tab affinities just so I could show what I'm getting and we can tally it up at the end of the stream. Usually I would leave my tab affinities on, but still use a dump tab. What I recommend is just take one of your random tabs. If you have a quad tab, even better. 
put it at the very beginning of your stash, even just temporarily when you're doing this type of strategy. And then you can immediately go to your stash and just control click everything in really, really quickly. I would leave my tab affinities on, but for random junk that doesn't go to a tab affinity, that's a good way to post strategy, really sort all that type of stuff. You know, things like incubators, maybe even the Eldritch, oh, there's our alarm. Normally, if I was sitting, I would stand up right now and at least stretch around a little bit, get a glass of water, make sure we take a little bit of that. Since I'm at my standing desk right now, not my sitting desk, I just use this to kind of bend my knees a little bit, a little bit of a stretch, kind of shake out, shake out your hands. You can look up. There's a lot of really good stretches out there. Find the thing that really works for you the best. Shake them around, kind of rotate them a little bit. If you have to go to the bathroom, do it. Walk around. Don't force it. Your, your kidneys will appreciate if you drink a lot of water and you don't, uh, you don't hold it too long. We listen to the alarm. I'd recommend setting that alarm again. Then we just dump our tab right here. And if we still had our scarabs in here, all that, we put in the next map, click Fortune Favors of Brave, and we go again. Since we do a chunk of four maps at a time, we know that our sextants will be ready to go after those four maps. And we have a really nice rhythm for how we're actually going into the maps and doing that. And then using Excellence Next here, which is an excellent program, to tally up what you're getting. Now, this is not particularly accurate. It does its best guess, checking PoE Ninja prices and all that type of stuff. But it is a nice way to get a rough idea of how much currency you made and be able to evaluate whether that was actually worth doing. So this represents about five hours of farming for me, particularly a really good way to evaluate whether those Harbingers were worth it. You can see that I have two full exalts here. I only got one exalt drop, which means I got another additional exalt just from exalted shards yesterday. And that type of stuff adds up. That's not even counting all of the chaos that I got. The downside to not using the tab affinities is you get this afterwards and it is a pain in the butt to, to sort. So if you do have confidence with your strategy, I would recommend keeping your tab affinities on, but it's really nice to do a spot check and really evaluate whether what you were doing was worth the time. The other tool that I like is called MapWatch. I'll have all the links for these things in the description below. And this is a good way to see like, hey, how many portals did I use? How many times did I die? How much time did I actually spend in my map? And they even have a downloadable version which will live update on that client.txt and it'll let you know how you're doing. I really like to do this to kind of spot check and get through like and see how these things are doing, how much time I actually spent in the map. Some of these things were kind of outliers. Like this one, for example, this was at 2.40 in the morning. Uh, don't look at that. <laughs> I was doing the uh, the temporal bubble combo with the rejuvenation, assassin and all that. And I it actually took all six of my portals it was very, very rippy. I actually had to spend some time and reflect on how I was going to deal with that combo. And this isn't the most accurate thing, you know, like it, it does its best guess from what it sees. Like it all it's doing is parsing the messages that you see from like entered location, left location, stuff like that. Doesn't make it the easiest to, to fully go through this, but you can see that in the past 24 hours, I have run quite a few maps. It's really easy to say like, hey, I played for a whole day and I haven't seen more than 50 chaos. And I recommend always going to map watch and just looking at this and saying like, oh, I only ran 15 maps yesterday <laughs> and I died three times every single map. And then think about like, oh, I didn't use any scarabs and I didn't use fortune favors of brave or any of that. I just did like 15 maps very inefficiently and I didn't really make any currency that I could notice. Because the most important thing is not regretting that time, being able to look back on it and saying, hey, that was fun and I enjoyed doing that and I enjoyed playing that. And you know, if absolutely, if you're having a ton of fun, just elk and go or not even just running your maps white and you don't care, that's fine. But if you put that little bit of effort in there and you want to say, hey, I made five exalts yesterday, using these tools is a great way to just make sure that, you know, keep yourself honest. It is so easy in life to build really bad habits of just like, I know, I know worse than anyone. <laughs> I would just like slouch down in my chair and do an absolute degenerate, you know, six hour session, standing up maybe once just to go to the bathroom the entire time, not drinking enough water and all that. And I, like at the end of a week after like league launch, I would be playing 16 hours every single day, you know, if I, you know, slacking on work sometimes a little bit as well, wondering like, oh, why does my back hurt? Like, oh, my wrists don't feel very good. I just don't feel awesome. Setting up a sustainable process about how you approach playing the game, not only will make you happier and healthier because you wake up in the morning, you feel good, you get your cup of coffee and you're excited to play. You're not just like degenerating your body, <laughs> but you're just also going to be more efficient and healthier because it's a sustainable process. Do you guys have any more tips or any other processes that I could also learn from? I would love for you to share them in the comments below. I'm always looking for new and interesting ways to approach games that are sustainable and healthy and make us happy. So as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Goodbye.